I wonder, what if Mazda started to develop an RX-9 in 2014 instead of letting the cherished RX lineage fade into silence? The following is an alternative history, so get yourself an alternative tea and settle in. In 2014, Mazda found itself standing at a critical juncture. Renowned for its commitment to engineering innovation and driving pleasure, the company felt mounting pressure to develop a new high-performance car under the revered RX nameplate. However, they were confronted with the stark reality of strict emissions regulations and fuel efficiency demands that made their iconic rotary engine impractical after decades of powering Mazda's most exotic lineup. To compound their predicament, the previous RX-8 had encountered a series of challenges throughout its lifetime, including lackluster straight-line performance compared to its competitors and notorious reliability issues, leading to plummeting sales in its later years. The board members at Mazda advocated for redirecting the company's focus towards their best-selling products and relying on the Miata to keep the brand's sporting intentions alive. While senior management concurred with this approach, they negotiated a small allocation of their budget for a final concept for the RX series, under the condition that it complied with modern fuel efficiency and emission standards while maintaining a competitive performance profile. Entrusted with spearheading this endeavor was Hiroshi Yamagata, Mazda's chief engineer and a fervent advocate for the rotary engine. Yamagata believed that the rotary engine's unique qualities, combined with recent technological advancements, could overcome its historical challenges and pave the way for the emergence of a compelling RX-9 model. Yamagata's first order of business was to integrate Mazda's Skyactiv R technology with the rotary format. This system combined direct fuel injection, optimized combustion chamber geometry, and advanced engine management systems specifically tailored for the rotary engine. To further enhance fuel efficiency and performance, Yamagata decided to incorporate hybrid technology into the RX-9 capitalizing on the hybrid powertrains from their successful Mazda 3 and Mazda 6 hybrids. Nonetheless, a significant challenge still loomed in terms of reliability. Despite several iterations of the existing Renesis design, Yamagata continued to encounter problems, even with the changes made to fueling and hybrid assistance. With time and budget running thin, he found an unexpected solution in a mundane email from his accounts team. The email inquired about an incorrect invoice for parts he had ordered which was supposed to be for alloy connecting rods. However, the supplier had mistakenly listed a series of materials intended for another company, a renowned aerospace materials lab. Within the invoice details, Yamagata stumbled upon references to lightweight alloys, high strength carbon fibers, and advanced ceramics fused into a composite material. This discovery sparked his inspiration. Leveraging the potential of the layered materials, Mazda's research and development team successfully incorporated them into the rotary engine design, a feat made possible due to the fewer moving parts compared to a traditional piston engine, thereby keeping costs down. This groundbreaking composite material exhibited exceptional resistance to wear, reducing the need for frequent maintenance and significantly improving engine longevity. Moreover, it effectively minimized the notorious apex seal issues that had plagued rotary engines in the past, enhancing the engine's overall efficiency and reliability. One final piece of the puzzle remained. Mazda knew that the RX-9 would have to reintroduce the turbocharger that had made the FD RX-7's performance so highly sought after, even though the initial sales of the RX-7 had been lackluster and its popularity only grew in the used market many years later. After careful consideration, Mazda realized they had nothing on hand that suited the characteristics of a rotary engine including the K04 Turbo used on the Mazda Speed 3. Instead, they decided on the Garrett GT 3582R, a turbocharger that offered an excellent balance of power, strong response, tunability, and reliable support, foregoing the expensive process of designing a new turbocharger to fit the RX-9. To assemble and test the final drivetrain, Mazda utilized the RX-8 platform, their sole rear-wheel drive platform at the time suitable for the high-power characteristics of the test bed. Although dated, the platform was updated with chassis, suspension and drivetrain components to handle increased power and improve rigidity. The culmination of these efforts resulted in the birth of the RX-9, with a new rotary engine codenamed Renesis 2, generating an impressive 368 horsepower, while achieving a fuel efficiency of 28 miles per gallon just within the target range. Mazda's board enthusiastically approved the project and the RX-9 came to life, 
all thanks to a serendipitous clerical error. In terms of design, Mazda set out to capture the hallmark characteristics of an RX model, long hood, short overhangs, and a sleek coupe-like roofline. Unfortunately, pop-up headlights were no longer permissible due to regulations, but Mazda incorporated thin LEDs to maintain a streamlined front fascia, a signature element of previous RX designs. The interior received a similar treatment, emphasizing cockpit-style ergonomics and focusing on sporting dials, gauges and buttons, rather than luxurious amenities. When the RX-9 was finally unveiled, critics and enthusiasts alike hailed it as a resounding triumph of engineering and design. The rotary engine's rapid power delivery, high revving nature, and distinctive sound captivated automotive enthusiasts worldwide. On the road, the RX-9 swiftly garnered a reputation as a driver's car, lauded for its smooth power delivery and balanced weight distribution. Surprisingly, the hybrid system's instant torque and eco-friendly credentials impressed even the most skeptical observers, with many praising the seamless transition between the two motors, something no other automaker had perfected yet. However, the combined technology did carry a weight penalty, which some critics found challenging to reconcile after the more nimble RX-8. It was a trade-off Mazda were betting would pay off, as their market research indicated that strong handling characteristics were less desired by the majority of buyers compared to straight-line performance. The success of the RX-9 breathed new life into Mazda's brand image. Yet it faced a familiar obstacle, price. Although the RX-9 showcased Mazda at its best, its sales fell short of expectations, primarily due to the expensive combination of technologies. Moreover, concerns persisted regarding potential reliability issues, given the RX-8's tarnished reputation in that regard. However, as the RX-9 entered its midlife cycle update, it gradually established itself as a formidable contender. With few issues arising and its unique powertrain setting it apart from the competition, the RX-9 solidified Mazda's position as a visionary automaker, capturing the hearts and minds of automotive enthusiasts for generations to come. This has been an alternative motoring history by past gear. What do you think would have happened if Mazda started making the RX-9 in 2014?